Okay, now let's talk about least common multiple. Least common multiple kind of looks like greatest common factor, but you want to be careful not to get those things mixed up or confused. Least common multiple, multiples unlike factors, remember when we did greatest common factor, it was what times what equals the number. On least common multiple, when you're finding the multiple of a number, you're basically asking, you're going to count by the number. So for example, if we look up here with 4, if I count by 4's, I would start with 4, and the next would be 8, next would be 12, or if you're having trouble counting by that number, if you're not able to do that or you're, you're kind of stuck there, basically multiple is kind of like multiply, so you're asking, this is 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4 would be 16, 4 times 5 would be 20. So you pretty much, for the least common multiple, you're going to do this for both of the numbers. Now I'm just going to go about 5, and then I'm going to head down here. I'm going to do like, I see how I did 5 numbers. Now I'm going to go down here and start counting by 5 down here. For the least common multiple, remember in the greatest common factor, we wanted the biggest number in both rows. For the least common multiple, we're going to be looking for the smallest, the least common multiple, the smallest number in both rows. So if I'm counting by fives, 5, 10, or again 5 times 1, 5 times 2, next would be 15, because that's 5 times 3, next would be and 20. And as you can see, uh-oh, there is the first number I get to, 20 is the smallest number in both rows, so the LCM, or, whoops, there we go, the LCM for 4 and 5 is 20. The smallest number that's a multiple of both 4 and 5 is 20. So let's do the same thing down here. If I have 6 and 8, let's count by 6's. So 6, next would be 12, and again, if you're not sure how to count by it, it's 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3 would be 18, 6 times 4, 24, 6 times 5, 30. Now, usually I just try to go about 5 and then go down to the next one, and if I need to keep going, I can just hop back up and keep going. 8, all right, let's count by 8's. 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, no, I don't have a number in both rows yet, so I'm going to keep going. 8 times 3 is 24, oops, look at that, 24, there's the smallest number in both rows, 24. So the LCM, or the least common multiple, for 6 and 8 is going to be 24. All right, so again, the, the thing that you want to remember is don't confuse least common multiple with greatest common factors. Least common multiple is when you uh, are counting by the number. All right, we then talked about fractions, like which one is bigger, well, or if they're equal. So if I have one half and three fifths, I have to see, well, which one is bigger? Now, let's say if, if I had something like this, three tenths and eight tenths, that would be easy to find out, because if the denominators are the same, you just look and say, oh, well, 8 is bigger than 3, so that has to be the bigger fraction. Now, let's get rid of that. What happens if the denominators are not the same? Well, if the denominators are not the same, one thing we want to do, make them the same. Make them the same, and how we do that is, let's find the least common multiple for each number. So let's count by twos, two, four. See, we're looking at the denominators here, two and five. We're going to find the least common multiple of each of those. So I'm going to keep going, counting by twos. I'll stop there at 10. Now let's count by fives, five, 10. Oh, there it is. 10 is my least common multiple. So we're going to make both of the denominators 10, just like that, OK? And really, we're actually going to start calling this now, instead of the least common multiple, we're going to call it the least common denominator, the D for denominator, because we're putting the least common multiple in the denominator. 
And let's see, what are we multiplying by to find this equivalent fraction? 2 times what is 10? 5. Have to do the same thing to the numerator because you have to balance it out. And down here, 5 times what is 10? 2. Do the same thing to the numerator to balance it out. 3 times 2 is 6. Now we can look and say, oh, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, which one's bigger? This one is bigger. So that's how you can find out if a fraction is larger than another fraction. So let's try it down in this one as well. 7 ninths, 4 fifths. That's kind of a tough one to figure out. So if the denominators aren't the same, let's make them the same. So let's go ahead and do 9 and 5. And let's count by 9s. 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 3, 27. 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 5, 45. We'll stop there. Let's go down here now. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, not there yet. Got to keep going. 35. You see what it's going to be? Good, 40, 45. Up oh, there it is. I got 45 in both rows, which means 45 is going to need to be my LCD, or my least common denominator. Because it's the least common multiple, but we're putting it in the denominator, so we're now going to call it the least common denominator. And what am I multiplying by here? 9 times 5 is 45. Do the same thing to the numerator. Down here, we're multiplying by 9, because 5 times 9 is 45. Do the same thing to the numerator. There we go. 35 45ths or 36 45ths. It's a close one, but this is the larger fraction. So that's how you can find out which fraction is bigger. If the denominators aren't the same, make them the same by finding the least common denominator.